All right, so the next step is to put the hub back on. This allows us to mount the degree wheel. So I'm going to pop this back on. I'm going to give it a little tighten down here. This keeps it from rocking back and forth a little bit. There's always a little tolerance difference between the keyway and the hub assembly. So that's pretty tight on there. Now we can take the hub assembly off and install the degree wheel. This is your typical degree wheel right here. And what it has, you can see it's got numbers all the way around it and little areas. This shows us top dead center, bottom dead center, the intake center line area, which is the method we're using for degreeing the camshaft. Uh, we're going to find the, the highest point on the intake lobe, and it's going to tell us where the degrees are in here. And remember, the cam card said we want 108 degrees, so that's what we're going to be shooting for on here is 108 degrees. So we just pop this on. Cinch it down. Next, we need to put a pointer on. Now, there are fancy dancy pointers like these right here. These are, these are fine. Um, they're a little expensive. Uh, the problem is this only has a quarter inch thread assembly on here, which is great for a small block Chevy because they bolt right here where the timing cover goes. The problem is this is a small block Ford. It's 5 16 so this isn't any good. Next best thing to use is just a little piece of wire bent around on the backside with a bolt in it. No big deal, no brainer, a simple little thing to do. It actually works really well, and you can move it from engine to engine with different size bolts on it. The pointer is just to keep us in line with the, with the degree wheel here, all right? And it doesn't really matter where, where the degree wheel's at or where the pointer's at. We can move the pointer over here, we can move it down here. We're just gonna leave the pointer where it's at and move the degree wheel so it's lined up dead center of this pointer right here, which is about right there. Give that a little cinch. So now, the crankshaft is right where it's supposed to be. Number one piston is, is at top dead center. We have a pointer. The next thing we need to do is something to measure where the lobe is on the camshaft. And we can do that with this device right here. This rides on the cam lobe, and this is a flat tappet cam. So we're using a flat uh, actuator right here. There are some for roller cams that also fit right inside here. You can, just, you can swap these out. So this is round just like a roller. This is flat for like a flat tappet cam. So we can drop this in the intake lobe. <clears throat> now on a small block Chevy, the intake lobe is the second one back, uh, which would actually be on this side, because this is number one cylinder on a small block Chevy. It starts with the exhaust, then the intake. This is a small block Ford, it's on this side. It starts intake, then exhaust. So we're gonna take this right here, and we drop it in place, and it just snugs in. There's O-rings on either side of these, and this drops right down in, and just the friction of the O-ring holds it in place here. So we drop that in. We'll just take a wrench, pop it back in here, and we're going to see where we're at. So we're going to crank the engine over, and bring it back here, and we're just going to watch the cam lobe right here. Notice I'm going with the rotation of the motor. This is the way the no motor normally rotates. So we're going to follow it right here. I'm going to bring it right on up, and we're going to see where the highest point is on here. As we can see, it's about in here, because if I keep going, it's going to start dropping back down. So let's back it up.